Hello and thanks again for taking the time to come and check this out. So today we are going to look at how to make this sweeping title reveal in motion or flying title reveal. I'm not sure of the exact correct term for it in the world of motion graphics but I call it a sweeping title reveal. Um, so when I'm looking for good After Effects graphics to reproduce motion and learn motion with this is another one of those elements that's really common. It's in so many of the After Effects titles packs, it's in the motion designers portfolio pages. It's usually a building block of a larger title graphic. Um, but what I wanted to do is highlight this and show anyone who's interested how easy it is to do this in Motion 5. Here I've got the titles animating in from left to right. Uh, it's really, really common to see this uh, working with the titles revealed in from right to left as well. All right, so let's get into this project I've got waiting for us. So to start with, we just want a line. It's not a rectangle, it's a line element. So grab your line tool and from right to left, hold shift and drag a line into the canvas. Um, you want to come to geometry and if you want to keep the same length as I'm using here, set this point to 600 and this point to minus 600. Then come into style and give it a width of 100 and you can turn off the end cap and start cap. And the last thing you want to do is come to properties and reset the X and Y position. All right, so that's how we're going to get started. So I'll just delete that demo line. So the first step is to animate this line path. And we want the animation to start at one second. So bring your playhead forward to one second. This project, by the way, is 30 frames a second, it's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second, so one second is 30 frames in the timeline. So with the playhead at one second, come into the inspector shape into the style panel and drag the last point offset to zero and set a keyframe. Then come forward to two seconds and bring that last point offset up to 100%. And now we can come into the inspector and adjust this curve. Okay, so I've got my screen resolution adjusted to make everything clearer. I get some really strange results in the keyframe editor. So all I did there was I came to use this tool, Fit Visible Curves and Window, um, and then I shortened my time line here to make the curve easier to use. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this curve and set the interpolation to Bezier. And break the tangents on each handle. Right, so with the shift key selected I'm going to just drag this bottom handle forward so that's influencing the beginning of the animation and I'm going to drag this handle right across this way and maybe even drag this further in. So what this is giving us is a line animation that will stretch in. It's going to go slowly at first and then when it hits this part of the curve it's going to leap forward and then settle down again at the end. So that's the path animation done. So now what we want is we want to just have this tip visible. There's two good ways that I've found to do this but I'm going to use uh, this method which is the one I keep coming back to. It's a little bit more fussy um, but you get a lot more uh, versatility with the placement of the titles. So 
we're going to use a mask to achieve our effect. So I've duplicated this path and I'll rename this as mask. And just to be clear about what's happening, I'm going to give it another color. So you can see our duplicate path is just running exactly with the same animation as our first path and concealing it. So what I'm going to do is, well we've got two choices. I want one path to be one frame shorter than the other so I can make the mask path one frame longer or I can make the original path one frame shorter. I'm going to choose that option because I want everything tied up at two seconds there. So I've got the play head at one second 29 frames. I'll grab our original path I'll pull back that last keyframe point. And so you can see now the mask path is running one frame slower than the original path. And that leaves us this tip. And if we mask out the animated path shape, that's all we'll be able to see. So let's do that. So I'll right click on that element and add image mask drop our mask shape in there as the source and set the blend mode to subtract. So I mentioned that this method is a little bit more fussy than the other one. Just when we set the mask we get these lines so I'm going to come into... of course we can do that ahead of um, time but I'm going to come in and to the inspector, come into geometry and just increase this point by two and this point by two and come into the style pane and increase the width to 104 and now there's no artifacts visible. So we have our flourish expanding in and contracting out over 30 frames so now we can add our titles. So I'll grab the main group, grab the text tool, and add this text. I'm using Avena Next as the font. I'm going to give it a size of 90. I'll center the alignment, and I'll come and reset the X and Y. And then I'll bring the play hit to two seconds. Uh, just bring it here so I can see the line. So I've got the play head sitting where the line elements visible. I'll just grab the Y position and drag it down. So we are sitting in the middle of it. And now I want to have the titles keyframed in. I could use a move behavior, but we'll use keyframes. So select the titles, bring the play here to two seconds, and our titles are sitting at X is zero, so set a keyframe there. And then bring the play head back to one second, and drag your titles away to the left, about there. And let's adjust the curve. So I'll select this curve and break the tangents for these handles. And then if I set the curve like this, then the titles are going to move very quickly in the beginning of the animation and then settle around about here. So there is just one more step and that is we need to mask out the titles and to do that we are just going to use the same mask. So I'll grab the titles and right click, add image mask, I'll set the mask in there as the source. And that's it, we are done. So. If you want the titles to come in from the other direction, um, let's bring our playhead back to two seconds and grab the titles and come to the X 
position and just reset the parameter. Oh, didn't have to do that. Just set another keyframe at zero. Bring the playhead back to one second. And move your titles the other direction. And grab this curve, break the tangents, and it works best if the titles are coming in really fast. So drag this handle down, let's have the titles start a bit closer in. Right, yep, as long as the titles start in front of where the line comes in, we'll be good. So, hey, there you are. It's really uh, easy to do this in Motion 5, and with this as a part of your wider titles, uh, it's going to look really good, or even just on its own, I think it's quite nice. Hey, I hope that is useful for you with your Final Cut in Motion titles. Thanks for watching.